There are more than 3,200 men and women who are currently serving as law enforcement officers in Monmouth County. Their fathers or mothers, husbands or wives, sons or daughters, brothers or sisters, family, friends, and neighbors. Each of them has decided to put on a uniform and pin on a badge to protect us and keep us from harm. Each of them has a reason for wearing their badge. Each of them has a story to tell. Meet police officer Nicholas Morgan of the Neptune City Police Department. I always tend to choose the, the path of most resistance, I'd say. Um, at this day and age, um, becoming a police officer is probably not the most ideal career for most people, um, which is probably why I cho chose it. It's, uh, for me, it's, I, like the, I like the challenge. Um, it's definitely something I never saw myself doing. Uh, I would have to say, giving, I would give credit to mostly uh, a good friend of mine, Gage O'Connell, and uh, his father, Doug O'Connell, for in, uh, introducing me in this career. Uh, when I got out of the Marine Corps in 2011, the, Doug thought that it would be a good idea for me to meet a friend of his who was a lieutenant at the time in Point Pleasant Beach. Uh, it was more of which a uh, non-formal interview. Um, after meeting the lieutenant, uh, I would assume I may have impressed him a little bit, and they thought that um, pursuing a law enforcement career would be beneficial to me and maybe more beneficial to law enforcement officers around. Um, so I would have to say that they aim me in the direction of uh, law enforcement. But before he put on the badge and uniform of a police officer, Officer Morgan had some growing up to do. The United States Marine Corps took care of that for him. Prior to enlisting in the Marine Corps, I didn't feel as though I had, um, I didn't feel as though I was developed enough as a uh, as an adult, like of a, of a man, I still felt like I was uh, a little bit immature at the time. So that's why I decided to join the Marine Corps because I knew that they would they would finish that. I had officers and I had my uh, staff in the Marine Corps who were able to implement um, in me how to be more of a man. To be honest with you, because at the time I was uh, at the age of 19 and 20, I was still I still had a young mindset. So the Marine Corps definitely filled that void for me. From the time that you deploy and the time that you get back, your, your mindset completely changes, um, especially seeing how the lifestyles, uh, you know, the, the people there live and how content they are with that lifestyle. You come back realizing, you know, how privileged we really are. First off, when we first got uh, overseas, with our first, uh, like, hour of getting off the C-17, um, you know, we were, we were briefed about, you know, the reason we're going over there. And they kept telling us, and it was, it, it, they would say, hearts and minds. You're here for hearts and minds. Um, it, you know, it wasn't as much about them respecting us as it was much about uh, them um, trusting us. We wanted to gain the trust and we wanted to befriend the local population that was there. The reason being is you want to, they're not going to talk to you they're not going to give you intel if they don't trust you, and especially if you don't respect, if they don't believe that you're respecting them, they're sure as heck not going to respect you. But respect can be an elusive thing. See, respect is earned, not given. Um, I would say an enjoyable day was as easy as stopping, uh, seeing a little kid, uh, and, and he would come up, and, he, and they, knew, they knew the word candy. They knew gimme and candy. Uh, an enjoyable day as just giving them like a piece of candy out of an MRE, like uh, they had M&Ms and Skittles, and seeing their eyes light up like they just won the lottery, you know. Just as something as simple as that where I could go anytime to a 7-Eleven or to an Exxon and get myself a piece of candy and it would seem like nothing. To them, that was like Christmas to them. So that, it, it, it's simple as that. But there is a big difference between being a Marine and a police officer. Or is there? So, going to Afghanistan in 2009, I knew at the time that I was going into a hostile environment. Um, enlisting in the police department at, uh, in 2000, uh, 2011, I didn't know that I would be going into a potential hostile environment. Um, I, I approach, uh, every approach, uh, every day I'm working on patrol, 
I implement what I was taught in the Marine Corps on patrol. And then that is the human aspect of it. And that is the winning over the hearts and minds of the people who you're patrolling over. Because at the end of the day, I, we're all human. When I was a Marine, I felt like I was a machine. But when I deployed, when I would talk to people, I'd take my glasses off, look them eye to eye. I want them to know that I bleed too. You know, I feel for you. You know, I understand that there are times where you have to gain control of situations, and you have to um, you have to you have to show uh, uh, force. Uh, you have to at least show the ability of a force. And but but for the most part of it, I want people to know when when I interact with them, whether they're right or they're wrong, that I I understand where they're coming from because I understand that everybody has bad days because I am not the person that could cast the first stone by any means. Understanding is built from the ground up and lessons learned are delivered at a young age sometimes. I remember when I was about five years old and uh, at the time I have two older brothers and I was living with my mother and father at the time. Um, the movie at the time when I was five years old, so this is probably 91, 92, uh, was Three Ninjas. And all three of my brothers had the uniforms, and I was the youngest, so I was Tum Tum. And this must—it must have been two o'clock in the morning. Um, there was a uh, loud knock on the door, and I remember uh, me getting up because I was a nosy kid growing up, and I would peek through my door, and I saw that uh, there was most likely the county officers, knowing my position, I was the county. They were serving a warrant, and they were going to arrest my father on an active warrant. My father was placed in handcuffs and I could see that there was probably three men in uniform arresting my father. So I decided to um, go into action and protect my dad because I don't, I don't know the police background. So I put on my uniform and I walked out of the, I more which um, karate kicked my way out of the bedroom and I demanded that the police officers let my dad go. Again, three, five year old, in a uniform, probably three o'clock in the morning, and I have to tell you that I still to this day remember one of the officers' reaction to when I came out of that room yelling with my mask on, um, and it wasn't, it wasn't, they, they felt for me. I could tell that they couldn't believe that this young boy just came out of the room yelling in his karate uniform, let my dad go. So, it, like out of the movie, the police officer took a knee, put his hand on my shoulder, um, asked one of the other off, spoke with my father first, then spoke with the other officers, and asked him to unhandcuff my dad at the, at the very moment. And my dad was able, they allowed my father to, to talk to me, and he said, you know, these guys are, he explained to me that they're, they're not here to hurt me, that these guys are good guys, I'm just going with my friends for a little bit, I'll see you later. And at that moment, I, I, was, I was angry, but I was, able to, I was able to calm down. And when my father told me that, hey, they're good guys, they're not going to hurt me, I'm going with them, they're my friends, that was my first police interaction. Um, and I feel like if that hadn't, hadn't gone the right way, like if my father got upset and, and began to become aggressive, and then the police officer and I, and I watched my, them treat my father in a bad way, I probably wouldn't be sitting here right now having this interview with you because that would have stuck in my mind. But because the officer first got down and on a level with me and, and spoke to me about it, and then, then they were able to get my father involved and show us that these are good guys. They're doing their job. My father made a mistake, which he is, he's paid for, and he has made changes since then. But at that time, he owned up to the mistake that he had made and he never had a negative, he never um, exerted a negative um, opinion towards the police, even as I was growing up, which is why in the town that I grew up in, grew up in, I always respected the police officers. I never knew what it was like to be one. Um, like I said, I was honest with you, I told you, I said, I didn't plan on becoming a police officer. I wanted to be a firefighter. I didn't know what was next. It wasn't until my friend and his father and his mother they, they, they more which drove me in this, this direction, so.